Hello again. Right, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say. So I've installed my first Arduino on my layout to control signal in this one, this one here. Um, this one can, is now controlling three signals, which I'll show you in a moment. One is operating as per normal, our previous test runs, but the other two are linked together uh, because they protect the junction. So when one, it, one of those signals is green, the other one needs to be red and vice versa. So what I've done is I've used the override switch, if you remember which turns the signal red, I've used that so that it switches from one to t'other. Uh, which you'll see in a moment. So what I've done is I've, because my signals were already in place, it was a bit of a, uh, a effort to get everything in and wired up. So what, what you can see here is I've actually put the resistors to my lights just as they go into the Arduino block. So that saves another bit of wire, I guess. Uh, I'm running this one off my 12 volt. I've got a 12 volt um bus that runs around the, the the layout and I'm using that as uh, the, the, the power supply to the Arduino. Um, you could use a, um, a, a plug-in USB which you only need 5 volts but if you're using the, uh, the, the voltage in which is what I'm doing here you, the voltage in needs to be between 6 and 12 volts and the Arduino to takes care of the voltage and, and brings it down to uh, the 5 volts. Um, so just to show you a bit more uh, what we got here. Right, okay, here here is the uh, here is the wires going to one of my signals. This is the, the, the solitary signal. You've got the the red, the the uh, the amber and the green and uh, a negative return as well. So they all go back to the Arduino. Um, and the other thing I need to show you. Oh, okay, of course I need to show you that. what I'm doing is uh, I'm using the um, the read switches on this this one just to sort of give it a go. Um, so that that is right under the track. In fact, right next to it, you can see is my my existing infrared detector. So that both of those are right next to the track, which I'll show you in a moment. The only other thing I need to show you on here, it's a bit of an unusual one because I don't wouldn't normally be doing this, but just for the sake of of, of completeness, as it were, uh, where is it? If I can find it. Okay, here. I hope I don't know if you can see it now, but we'll give it a go. Try and focus in on that. That is my my um, my point control, uh, and what I've done is I've let's see if I can get it from a different angle. It's not very easy, is it? Okay, this is my my point motor here, um, and you may be able to see this little black and white um, black and white switch on the end here. I'm pointing to that's a that's a very small micro switch and what i've done is that is my override switch so when the point lever moves the over the micro switch will act depending on which way the point lever moves so that it will turn one of the signals on and the other one to red um sorry it's not very clear but i can't really get a good good picture of it so all i'm saying is that i've used the override switch um as a micro switch on this and it's controlling being controlled by the throw of the point motor Right, let's have a look at the top deck. Right, so we've got uh, uh, the Arduino controlling three signals. This one is a standalone signal, and this one is a double-headed signal for, for this junction here. Um, the detector, I've got my existing um, infrared detectors there, and the, uh, the read switch is just about, just about there. And the same for this one here. The um, detector is there, and the read switch is about about there or so. Um, right. So first thing we we'll do is we'll we'll power all this up. Okay, let's power up. Um, so in theory, what should happen is the three uh, lamps, one, two, and three, should all connect to one Arduino. They should all go through their little startup sequence and then go to green, with the exception of this one over here. So power on. There we go. Power's on. Good, excellent. Uh, for these two, obviously, because it's a junction, only one of those can be green at any one time. So, uh, as I said below, what I've done is I've wired this into the override switch, but it's the override switch is actually fixed to the uh, the points motor. So when the points motor moves, that then changes one of the override switch positions. So all I need to do is throw the points on this, and it will swap round. 
It happens a bit fast, but uh, maybe that's something I need to tinker with later. It'd been quite nice if the, the points moved in and they delayed changing over, but there we go. Um, so in terms of actually using the uh, the locomotive, um, I've, I've got, I did a little test run just now, and would you believe it, even though in the previous video, the locomotive was operating the reed switch with just the magnets in the motor, uh, now I've done it on here, it doesn't. Who knows why? Welcome to the world of model railways. Uh, I mean, there is a layer of cork under here and the ballast as well, so maybe it's just not close enough to do it, but who knows? So the magnet's on my train here. So if I pass it over, if you look at this, this green light here, passing over the um, the reed switch about now. Okay, that's gone green, that's gone red, excellent. Now that will go through its sequence of, um, of lights and I've done mine for about 10 seconds or so because that seems to suit my layout a bit. Um, so that's great, that's all working nicely. Uh, in terms of this signal down here, I've just got a straightforward override switch that when I throw the override switch that just goes red and stays red like that. Um, can you see it? Yes you can, yeah. So that's all good. Um, so as far as I'm concerned now, that's, 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 a, that's great. So one Arduino controlling three signals, which at the moment are set up to use my um, the, the reed switches I've put under the, the, the deck. Um, I'm probably going to put these back to, um, to the infrared sensor because um, there's just I, that's where I've got elsewhere and I don't really want to end up with two different systems on one on one layout. So it's going to be, at the moment, it looks like it's going to be all my sort of rolling stock will have the, the silver paper attached to the underside of the locomotive to operate the uh, signals. It may change, but uh, that's, that's the plan at the moment. Okay, uh, I think that, that's it really. Um, where are we going next? What we're doing next is um, I'm tempted to have a little play around with, with block signaling, not on my particular layout because I don't have enough room for it to work really. But I just wanted to see if one Arduino can control uh, enough signals to run a little block. Um, so that's, that's the other thing. And other, after that, I think I'm going to go and have a play around with my... Um, my manual points on my on my layout. I've got quite a few manual points in my my depot area, de depot area uh, and around my little terminus station. Um, and I think I'm going to ma manually change those. So have a fiddle around with that. Now probably a brand new project I'm going to work on. Okay. Well, I hope that's uh, been of interest to you. Uh, and if you can have a go at it, good luck. I know it can get frustrating doing things like this, but bear with it. It seems to seems to work. Okay. Bye.